guys, Charnimus Prime here doing another Transformers figure review on the Transformers 4 Age of Extinction leader class Grimlock. If you're trying to get your Transformers figures, you can get them at Big Bad Toy Store. Big, big, big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. Great looking packaging over here. I really like the picture of Grimlock. This is a nice picture of Grimlock we have on the front of the packaging. I like that. I like the clear window box where you can see Grimlock in all his chrome glory. You got Transformers on the side. Uh, nothing really much at the top over here. It says Transformers and then Transformers Generations Leader Class Series M4 number two. Now the back of the package we have this picture of Grimlock with his dog-like alt mode. Uh, it looks more like a dog than a T-Rex to me. There's his robot mode looking pretty badass. You can also get Leader Class Prime. Then he's got this bio right over here. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause it now. And then on the side we have an Autobot logo. And then at the very bottom, not much going on. All right, well let's get to it and crack this thing open. So here's Grimlock out of his packaging and I gotta say, Overall, this figure is extremely disappointing. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed out about it. Don't really like the figure too much. I just wanted a very large Grimlock that actually transforms. And I don't really like the figure overall. It's, like I said, pretty disappointing. But that's more about the alt mode of the figure, his dinosaur mode. But this robot mode is very cool. I gotta say, I love this part of the figure. This is actually the one cool thing about the figure is this robot mode. And it looks Badass, man. I'm actually stoked about this. Over, you know, the fact that he turns into a crappy looking T-Rex, that sucks hella bad, but this looks cool to me. I really like this a lot. He doesn't have any huge parts in the back or anything like that that makes him look awkward. I'm not a big fan of his weapons that they gave him. He has a club. I mean, come on, no sword, but a club. He has this kind of weird looking shield over here, which isn't too terrible or anything, but a nice looking figure. He has nice chrome applications over here with the shit and over here on the torso and then the shoulder pads. So it's distributed evenly, I think, throughout the figure. I think it looks pretty nice. So let's take a closer look at his accessories and then we'll take a closer look at this Grimlock in his robot mode. So here's the Dragon Tooth mace that he comes with. And like I said, I don't really like the choice for him having a mace instead of a sword, but I think it's a pretty cool looking mace. It doesn't look too bad. And this does form into the tail of Grimlock. Uh, actually, we just go over the transformation really quick on this. You just uh, collapse this in right here. And make Make sure this is pushed down. This has a hole right over there and over there, and these tabs stick out and place nicely. So there's the tail. And you can see his shield is tabbed into his forearm over here, so there's that slot right there. And when you put this in, it just goes like that, so that's not too bad. And I really like this gold chrome on the inside of the shield. I wish it was painted like that on the outside, but this bronze color over here isn't too bad. I just think this gold on the interior of the shield looks a bit nicer. That looks really cool. I wish that was on the outside. And then it has these spikes right over here, and then this little spike right here, serrated. It's not bad, so you just want to flip this down, and then move this all the way back, and then you connect this to the mace. See, these two parts connect into these two empty holes right over here. And we're getting it done. Boom. There it goes. So you can see that's going to plug into Grimlock later on. So as I had mentioned in my other Bayformer Dinobot reviews, they all have this knight theme going on, which I think is a cool move. I like how this looks and I really like the head sculpt of this figure. He has no light piping. He has this light teal color painted for the eyes, so it's not really blue. Definitely more of a turquoise kind of color. But I like the face sculpt. I think it looks really cool and I really like the helmet on the figure. It looks really nice. I like the color choice. It doesn't seem like it's just a solid black. It's got some kind of a metallic sheen to it on the face and I think that's pretty nice and I like the bronze color for the helmet. I don't remember seeing any bronze in the Grimlock from the trailers or anything so we'll see but uh, if you can get there, yep, there's the back of his head. Not a whole lot going on. Then this spike right over here is made out of a somewhat pliable material so you don't have to worry about that snapping off very easily and it's kind of hard to see his face as you turn it from side to side. He's got that guard right there and that really blocks a lot but I really like the design for this. I think it looks really cool. I like the chrome. You can see my reflection of my hand waving in the chrome. As we pan back and get a wider shot of this guy, it looks pretty awesome still, man. Look at that. I really like the teeth right over here. That's awesome. I like how the T-Rex head makes these shoulder pads. That's a very cool move as well. And all this chrome right here on the torso section is pretty nice. I really like that a lot. 
think that was a very smart move on Hasbro's part. I'm digging the chrome, and it's not too fragile. I've transformed this guy numerous times, and I haven't had any chrome really chip off on me or break, but we'll see in the future because the figure is still relatively brand new. He has that same bronze color going on on the top of his arms over here. Very shiny metallic paint. It actually has two different kinds of plastic over here. There's a variation between these two. Uh, this one's a little shinier. This one's a little bit more flat. Then you have the black and more of the bronze right here on the side. There's his hand sculpted, not too bad. And then there's his legs looking pretty sharp. And I like this plating over here for his crotch piece and everything. It looks pretty good. Very much looks like a knight. And then the chrome again right here on the inside of his calves. He has pretty skinny legs. His legs do look pretty skinny. Then here's some random spikes kind of filling this out right here in the back. And then here's his pointy elf shoes. Not too shabby. I think it looks all right. And as I had mentioned before, I really like that there's not a whole lot of junk on the back of the figure. You know, there's not any kibble or anything on the back. The only thing you really get are those T-Rex feet on the back of the forearms. So as far as articulation goes, it is not terrible, but uh, I still feel like it's a bit lacking. So his articulation is okay, but there's one secret surprise I'm going to show you at the end of this segment over here. So his head moves side to side. There's no ball joint or anything, so you can't make him look up at all or pivot. It's just a horizontal movement right over here at the neck. He has shoulders that move outward. You can rotate them forward. He actually has these little teeth parts that plug into the jaw section of the T-Rex and these pop out very easily. This is made out of soft material by the way. You can rotate at the elbow and he bends 90 degrees at the elbow and he rotates at the wrist right over here. There's no waist articulation at all. The legs can move outward very far. You can get him to kick forward very far. He has rotation right here at the upper thigh. He bends at the knee quite a bit. Due to the transformation, these can split open so you can really get him to bend all the way like that and I think that's awesome. And the feet can move down and move up and you can rotate them side to side and you don't get any ankle pivot. But, due to the transformation, you can untab this over here, and you can make a fake ankle pivot that goes inward, and I am very excited about that. That is awesome. It's I know they didn't really do it on purpose, but you can get Grimlock in a pose like this, and I think that is cool as hell. That really makes a big difference to me. I think that is just great, man. It makes for a lot of posability, even though this is not really the best pose ever. I mean, that might be a little too exaggerated over there, but the fact is, is that you can get a lot of posability out of this guy in his robot mode. So as Grimlock is a leader class figure, he stands pretty tall. I'm measuring him up to the dinosaur heads at 10 inches tall and the top of his head's closer to nine inches tall. Here's Grimlock compared to the Age of Extinction Premium First Edition Leader Class Optimus Prime. One thing I forgot to mention is that you can switch the shield and the mace with Grimlock over here. It doesn't have to be just the left hand with the shield and only the right hand with the mace. And here's Grimlock compared to what I believe is the Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe Class Optimus Prime. Thank you to Rick Dominguez. This was a birthday gift from a couple years back and I think this is the closest in scale I'm gonna have for you guys to show Optimus with Grimlock the way we see him in the movie. I will show this figure riding the Dinobot Grimlock. And here's movie Grimlock compared to Masterpiece Grimlock. Thank you John 3.0 and I do not have a G1 Grimlock to compare this guy to even though I am looking for one so if anybody has one for sale you know let me know I'll buy it off you. But this resembles the G1 figure well enough to get an idea of how the G1 original Grimlock look. And here he is next to Dinobot Deluxe Class Scorn. And then here's Grimlock compared to the Revenge of the Fallen Supreme Class Devastator. And yes, I did paint his face. Not too bad, huh? And here he is next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. So I'm really sad to transform this guy out of his robot mode. Like I said, this is my favorite part of the figure, the robot mode. But anyway, let's get to it. Will you take us away, Bumblebee? Alrighty, so let's remove these weapons, huh? Let's get these out of here. I actually have to transform these again, which is going to take a whole lot of time, right? Now, this is very easy. Just collapse this and then retab this. And then, how did I have this before? Oh, yeah, it goes like that. Yeah, all right, there we go. Okay, so there's a the tail. And we'll put that aside. And you want to straighten out all the limbs, move Bumblebee out of the way over here. And I'm actually going to straighten the head and move the arms outward. Good deal with that last. And then we're going to work on these legs over here. Now, the tip of his toes bend in like that. So we're going to undo the ankle on each of these. And undo that one. Like I said, they bend inward and then split them apart. These tabs right here go into the knee joint right there. So that's how that connects. And we're going to flatten this section out over here and you're going to see those T-Rex arms. And then I'm going to leave these out like so. Now it gets a little tricky with the ankles over here with these feet. Uh, you want to rotate uh, at least 180 degrees. Actually, I like having the toes pointing towards the darker part over here. And then I'm going to 
flip this all the way around, and then bend this inward, flip this all the way around, and then bend that inward. But like I said, I want the toes pointing the darker part right there. So trim this once more again. So yeah, kind of forgot. Now the directions on this actually are pretty weak because they just show how to transform them from T-Rex mode into robot mode. So you kind of just have to figure it out on your own unless you're watching this review. You want to remove this jaw part over here, move these pieces up, and then you want to take these little rubbery pieces and move them down like this. And then you're going to shift this whole upper torso section up. So go like that. And we're going to leave this sideways. And now this is the part of the transformation I really, really hate. Is that this bronze part right here is connected into the chrome. And this was a big moment of fear for me. I felt like I was going to really break something. And sometimes it still does feel like something's going to break. But you want to untab this. So where this meets, it's going to come apart. And it goes undone like that. And this tab is going to move into a separate tab. So we're going to move this so that it's facing forward. So you can see the difference right there and right there. Oh god, I hate doing this part. There it goes. See that loud sound? It's scary, man. It sounds like something's going to break. Anyway, move that up out of the way. And then we're going to move... Uh, well, we can actually attach the T-Rex head. Uh, it splits apart right here from the jaw. It swings upward. So we can take this apart and then move the jaw down as we do that. And then do the same thing on this side over here. Split this apart and then move the jaw downward and swing it forward. And then connect the face together and everything tabs in nicely. There's tabs on both the upper and bottom part of the jaw, and there we go, we have a T-Rex looking face. And then we're gonna wanna scoot this back over here, and then rotate these around, and rotate this around, and then what's gonna happen is we're gonna fold this all, or actually wanna rotate this again, and then fold it in like that. So, see that I did rotate this 180 degrees and fold it in like that. And then there's all these tabs in here that you need to really pay attention to or else it's not gonna, not gonna connect securely. So there's these tabs right here. That's gonna go into these sections of his legs from his robot mode. So we're gonna put that in there and tab this in here. Then there's these other tabs right here on the bottom part of these legs right there and it goes into this black part right over here. And that's gonna fold and connect right over there as well so you want to make sure everything's tabbed in securely and it goes in not too badly and then put these flaps off to the side and then these chrome pieces are going to meet right here in the middle so let's get that all put together and get this meeting right here and it's not too shabby except for that little arm falling down and we're almost there and just put this right back it's not too bad and then we can actually just move uh, these little feet down. So the toes are pointing downward. And then this got undone over here. And then you want to rotate so that these shoulder pads are facing upwards and then move them down. Do that over here. And then move the feet down. And then rotate at the elbow or at the knee, I guess. Now it's a knee. And then all you really have to do now is just attach the tail. There's these two chrome pieces that stick up. There are these tabs right here and right here. Very hard to see because there's a whole mess of chrome, but one and two. And then there's these holes that they're going to go into. And this will complete the transformation. So let's get this all put together nicely. And get these arms straightened out over here. And there it is. That is the T-Rex mode. I don't like it. I, I really don't like it. it. It's it's quite terrible in my opinion. This is just my personal opinion, but I don't like this. I think this looks like a crappy looking T-Rex. This looks weird, man. It looks like a flying dog or something. Never ending story. Oh, and it came apart. But with playing around a side and everything, man, I mean, really, come on. Ah, this figure just looks so weak in this T-Rex mode. I'm really not liking it. The head's not big enough. This whole torso section's way too long. The tail could be longer. Maybe it wouldn't feel like this torso section was so long if the tail didn't seem so short. And you can't really get him standing up, uh, leaning forward like the way we've seen him in the trailers. This is actually much more of a G1 Grimlock kind of stance with the tail touching the ground. But the tail doesn't even really touch the ground on this guy. But to get a 360, oh, and this pancake effect over here, looks like he's been flattened or something. It's really weird. Uh, I really don't like how this thing is molded. Again, I like the chrome and I like the color choices throughout the figure. Actually, if you bend the knees enough, you can get him in that T-Rex stance. One thing that kind of stands out that's a little weird to me besides these giant ears over here is that he has canines, uh, if I remember. I mean, I'm not a paleontologist or anything, but I don't think T-Rex has had canines. I think that's a mammal kind of thing, but I don't know. I could be wrong. I really like how the eyes look 
though. The teal color works out very, very well. It looks like it's glowing, but it's just the chrome reflecting the teal from the eye. I think that's really nice. And then looking at this guy dead on, he's got this huge gap right there in the lower jaw, and it's kind of, I don't know, looks like it's not very threatening when you look at it dead on like this, because like if he just goes to bite you, it's just going to go into nothing. I think that's kind of weird. The teeth are made out of a pliable material, so you don't really have to worry about those breaking. So I like the chrome and everything. The chrome does look nice, and I like the variation. We have this gunmetal color over here. I do have some light scratching on it, but it's not bad. I think overall it came out pretty durable. And then just looking at the rest of this guy, you know, as far as the paint choices and the sculpting, nothing terribly new over here. You can see his hand sticking right there in the back. We get these big T-Rex toes over here too. Here's his underbelly. It fills out nicely. It's okay. Eh, it's not great. Eh, I'm not a big fan of it, so I've said that many times. But yeah, so here's the rest of it. An okay Dinobot mode. I really just... I don't like it. Now as far as Grimlock's articulation goes, his head can move back that much, but it kind of splits apart, so it's more due to the transformation it can do that. And you can get him to look down a little bit, uh, it's kind of scary, but you can do that if you wish, so that's kind of neat. And he does have the jaw articulation, but you can't rotate his head side to side or anything like that. His little arms can move forward and back, and he does bend at the elbow on each of the arms. These do pop off easily as you would seen earlier. The legs move outward, forward, bend at the knee, and then you can move the feet up like that, but you can't move them down anymore. So that's about it. No tail articulation unless you want to take it apart. Now to measure Grimlock out in this medium stance, he stands just over six inches tall, and then measuring him from nose to tail, he's at about 12 inches across. So here's our leader class Grimlock compared to Dinobots Deluxe classes Slug and Scorn, and these don't really look like they're in scale together. I do have the Voyager class Grimlock, so I can't wait to open that one up and see how those three look. And here's Movie Grimlock compared to Masterpiece. Grimlock and Masterpiece Grimlock is much larger and they're both in the modern stance or uh, yeah I'm gonna call it the modern stance. And they look pretty cool seeing them side by side like this by the way I like it. Then here's both figures in their G1 stance. Then here he is standing next to my Deluxe Class Prime, so let's see if we can get Prime riding Grimlock over here. Let's see, uh... Okay, that took a lot longer than I thought it would, but there's Prime riding Grimlock, and it's not really quite in scale compared to what we've seen in the trailers, but I think this is the closest I can get, unless there's a Cyberverse figure or something like that. It actually doesn't look too terrible, it just doesn't really match the scale that we saw in the movie. Even though I think this does kind of match the scale when we see Optimus punch Grimlock in the face, so I don't know. So it's just my personal opinion, but I don't think this figure is worth the 40 plus dollars, uh, you know, especially with it lacking so much in this dino mode. I really don't like it too much, and I can't wait to see how the Voyager one looks. I'm really excited about that one. Uh, probably later today, I'm going to have a review that has nothing to do with Transformers, but the next Transformers review will be the Voyager class Grimlock. And please check out tformers.com for a full photo gallery of images of this particular figure right here, and hit the like button if you you like the video leave a comment and do not forget to subscribe i'll catch you guys later peace, peace. that's crispy you like this alt mode a lot so I'm really excited to trans- So I'm really tra- <laughs>